everybody, let's plant a cottage garden. My next three videos are going to be all about planting a cottage garden and we're actually gonna plant the cottage garden as well. Today, we're gonna do a DIY project with these terracotta pots because it's one of the elements that we're going to incorporate into the cottage garden. We're also gonna talk about, you know, what is a cottage garden and what do you need to do to kind of create that look and create that style in your own garden. What is a cottage garden? Well, today's cottage garden is a little different than cottage gardens from the past. Uh, back in the 16th century, it was the peasants that actually started cottage gardens and they did it out of necessity to feed their families. So cottage gardens were planted around where they lived in the villages and they were full of edibles and vegetables and herbs and fruit trees. And maybe there was some flowers dotted, you know, throughout the garden, real simple, easy things like daisies and violas and primrose. But for the most part, they were essential gardens that they used to help supplement feeding their families. Now, cottage gardens have totally evolved since then, and I could go into a big, long spiel about how they evolved, and some guy took it and ran with it and all that, but now nah, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about today's cottage garden and what you need to do to kind of create that look. So today's cottage garden is really a very informal design. There is no structure nor formality to it whatsoever. It really is different from person to person because it really incorporates the personality of each person that's planting the garden. So what I create might be different than what you create or somebody else creates, but we all kind of have a vision in our head of what we want that to look like. And I guess for me, when I think cottage garden, I think cozy, intimate, hidden room or enclosed. Maybe it's enclosed in a stone you know, uh, wall, or maybe it's enclosed with a picket fence, or maybe it's enclosed in a you know, a, a hedge of roses or a hedge of bigger plants or even a hedge of boxwoods to kind of enclose it in. I also think that it's not planted in straight lines. There's no like big lines of anything. Everything is kind of just all over the place. And then there's little vignettes of like, I think of vintage things uh, like antique watering cans and maybe a bistro set or two chairs that are low to the ground with a fire pit in front of it and then terracotta pots planted up with herbs and low growing annuals in it. Then I think that, you know, there's a mix of roses in it and perennials that give you all that beautiful color. Now, I know a lot of people will tell you that a cottage garden is supposed to be soft and whimsy and just use pastels and nah, I think that's whatever you want it to be. If you love pastels, use pastels. But if you love those big, bold colors, you can use those too. If you want to mix it all up, guess what? You can do that too because there are no rules. It's an informal garden that takes on your personality. So I think what you have to do first is decide where do you wanna put it? Now for me, I think it needs to kind of either go around a structure or I need to have a fence or something that's gonna give me the structural piece that I'm gonna build my garden around. So I'm gonna actually build mine around my big red shed and I'm going to be putting a fire pit in it. We are gonna put a little picket fence in it. I also am going to be using edibles and ornamentals and shrubs and a few trees. I'm gonna put an arbor and we're gonna put some climbing rose on it, roses on it. And here's the thing, that probably won't be all that I do to it. It's all that I'm probably gonna to do to it this year because it is gonna be evolving. I don't think you can create that kind of look, bam, in one day or overnight. I think it's something that needs to evolve over a couple of years. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my look that I'm going for, I'm gonna get the bones of the structure that I want in there, and then as we progress through time, I'm gonna add more things to it. But today, what I wanna do is I am gonna take some terracotta pots, and I wanna kinda make them my own, and I'm gonna be doing a little project where I am going to be painting these. Now, I'm gonna take just a can of spray paint, and I went and got some of the Rust-Oleum. Um, this is the Ultra Matte white it's got paint and primer in it together and i'm just going to paint all of these white then we're going to do a marble dip technique where you fill a tub with water and then you take spray paint spray it on the top of the water and then you dip the pots and kind of roll them around in there and everyone will come out looking a little bit different so i have chosen to use let's see this is called satin i'm using a satin and this one's called seaside so i'm going to be using a blue and I'm gonna be using a green. So I'm not gonna mix the colors. I'm gonna do four pots, two in blue, two in green. This green is called Key Lime. These were the two that when I'm standing there looking at the gazillion colors of paint, these were the two that my eye kept going to because I want 
kind of a contrasting, brighter, subtle color. I don't want neon, but I don't know. This is what I picked out and what I'm going to use. So we're going to be doing those today, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, but we're going to be putting in the garden like this week. So we'll be putting in the next video. We'll be doing like some of the bones. We'll be putting in some of the, uh, the arbor. We'll be putting in the roses that are going to go on the arbor. We'll put in the fence. We'll put in the fire pit. Uh, maybe we'll get some structural bushes planted as well. And then the third video will be about planting all of the perennials and kind of staging all the pieces that I'm going to put together to kind of start my creation of my cottage garden. Um, so the pots that I'm going to be using, I'm going to use four terracotta pots. I have a 14 inch, a 12 inch, a 10 inch, and I chose terracotta because they hold paint really well, but also because they're cheap. So if I end up hating this <laughs> and I don't want to put it in the garden, at least I'm not out a whole bunch of money or I can find another place to put it or I can gift it to somebody, but I think I'm going to like it. So I've never done it before, but I've seen like lots of examples of it. Uh, the other pot I'm going to use, I'm actually sitting on, uh, but I'm going to be using, let's see if I can pull it out here. I'm going to use what they call it, uh, I don't know, a mom pot, an aster pot, but it's kind of a more of a short squat pot versus the taller pot like this. So I'm going to go ahead and spray paint them all white, and then I'll show you how to dip them. Okay, make sure you shake your paint can up. And you don't want to be right on top of it. You want to be far enough away that you don't run the paint. And it's okay if you get some of the paint on the inside. That'll be full of dirt and you'll never see it. Okay. I am going to put two coats of paint on this. So you are going to have to let it dry. And then there is that little lip up there, so make sure you get that too. And I don't need to get the bottom. I just need to get a good... Just keep going back and forth. Okay, just get a nice coating on there. I'm going to do all four of them. And then I'll let them dry, and then I'll put a second coat on. Okay, I'm still on my first can, and I'm getting ready to put my second coat on this one here. And I turned them upside down. I don't know if it's easier upside down or right side up. I'm not sure. The other thing is if there is a little bit of wind, spray like the wind is going this way. Try to spray with the wind so it doesn't blow back on you. So I'm going to end up using probably this whole can because I might have to do some touch up and I'll have to do the rim. Okay, so there we go. Let's let them dry. Okay, so I've got them all painted white and they're drying. So then we're going to dip them. Now, I think I'm going to kind of arrange them like this and then they're going to be kind of like next to a chair that's going to sit low and then there'll be a fire pit in front of that. But I think that's kind of what I'm going to do with them. But let me give you 10 tips or I don't know if they're 10 tips, but some tips. Uh, just when you're planting or thinking about doing a cottage garden that will maybe help you start the creation process. So one of the things that I did was, you know, I've been thinking about this since last year as far as whether or not I wanted to put a cottage garden in. And I know for me, I, I didn't want to add another thing to my house that was going to create more maintenance, more work. And that's the beauty about a cottage garden. So tip number one is it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. And so if you're trying to make it perfect, then maybe give up the cottage garden idea and go for more or more of a formal look. But that's not what a cottage garden is. A cottage garden is informal and it's going to fit your personality. And you're going to like probably Google things and Pinterest things and watch videos. And you're going to find little things in each video that speak to you that you love, because that's kind of what I did. I kind of like, I watched some videos, I went to Pinterest, I, I Googled cottage garden design, and then, you know, different aspects of different gardens spoke to me, and I went, ooh, I love that, or ooh, I don't, I, that doesn't look like a cottage garden to me, 
or I don't like that color, or oh, I love that. And you know what? It's going to do the same thing to you. So then I kind of just made a list of all the things that I love. So that's number two. Make a list of all the things that you want to incorporate into the cottage garden. Now, there are no right or wrong. There really isn't. I think it's just you have to love it. That's all. And you know what? You might plant something. You might not love it. That's okay, too, because you can dig things up and move them around. And that's okay. I think sometimes we go for perfection, and you don't have to be perfection when you garden. It's okay to be informal. It's okay to have something not turn out. But then sometimes you do that and you get a happy accident and it's so cool when that happens. So tip number two, you know, when I plant, I try to plant larger drifts of things. I don't necessarily plant just one of any one thing unless it's going to be a specimen plant, like a rose plant or something that I'm going to build other things around. Or maybe I'm going to put a big obelisk in the middle of the garden and I'm going to put a sweet pea on it. And that's going to be like a focal piece. Everything else that I do, especially when I'm doing my perennials or I'm going to plant annuals, I'm going to do them in what I call a drift. So I'm going to plant at least three, maybe five, maybe seven. And even then, in this kind of a garden, you know how they talk about planting odd numbers? Yeah, that is a great rule of thumb. But in a cottage garden, you can do whatever you want. If you want to plant four, plant four. It's okay. But I think you should do drifts. And I think the other thing is... You should try to repeat things maybe to kind of give your eye a few places to rest. And I think it's okay to mix the colors up. I think it's okay to have that pop of red with the oranges or with the lavenders. But I don't think that I would like every other plant do red, lavender, red, lavender. I would do a pop someplace maybe in the back of the border or where you want someone to draw your eye. I might do that, but uh, you kind of want to... I don't know, plant what you like too, but you also want it to look good. So there, there's a, you know, a little bit of a art to that. The other thing is, um, I guess that goes to the, the, do you want it to scream at you? And that would be like pops of color, you know, strategically placed versus in the wrong place. And then it's screaming at you. I don't, I don't know if that makes sense. Um, let me see, how can I put this? I guess for me, I don't want it to be jarring. I want it to be cohesive. And I don't want like red polka dotted throughout a pastel. I might put it in one spot, in one spot only. And it might not even be a plant. It might be a pot that's red. So before you plant anything, remember to set everything out so you like where you place it. The other thing is, I, I do think, I think anyways, there should be some kind of structure, whether it's a fence, it's a wall, it's an arbor, whatever. So I'm going to put a little picket fence. I'm not enclosing the whole thing. I'm actually going to use one side of it that I'm going to put trees in. And I thought I had started that process last year by putting the arborvitas in. They all croaked and they didn't live. So I pulled them all out. So I have to start all over. But I am going to still put my arbor in. I am going to put the David Austin climbing roses. I'm going to use the, uh, it's kind of a peachy color. What's it called? Lady Shallot, Rose of Shallot, something like that. Anyways, we're going to be putting those on the arbor, and then I'm just going to use two fence panels. I'm not putting fencing around this whole thing. I haven't 100% decided what I want to use as my enclosure to enclose it in. If I want to use boxwoods, if I want to use uh, burning bushes, if I want to use lilacs, I haven't decided yet. And see, that's okay if you don't have everything figured out because it is an evolving thing. And so that's tip number, I don't even know what number I'm on, but that's another tip is have patience with your garden and let it evolve. That's okay too. How many of you watch the videos on YouTube of people take you on their tours of their cottage gardens and they're very, very cool. They did not make those in a day. Okay, some of those people have been gardening for like 20 years. I went to a garden walk in Rockford and went to some of the gardens that they highlight. It is a very cool thing that they do. And I went to this one lady at, well, this married couple's house and they have the most developed garden. It is Oh, it is gorgeous. I mean, I just want to go camp in their backyard and take it all in and live there for like a week. It's so cool. But they have been gardening that garden for 24 years. So after you've gardened for 24 years, you probably have a little more cohesiveness to your garden. I'm kind of starting with a blank slate over here. It was lawn on the side of my big shed that kind of sort of looks like a barn. And I'm trying to create this. And so that might be what you're doing too. I don't have I have trees along the back of my property, but for the most part, it's big, it's open, and it's flat. And I have a few trees here and there, so I have to kind of create that. So you start 
you got to start somewhere. So this is where I'm starting and it'll evolve from there. And that's what you need to do too. The other thing is be prepared for your garden to change. It will change. Some of the things that I'm using will seed because I'm putting black eyed Susans. I'm putting uh, cone flowers and they will seed. I'm going to put foxglove and delphiniums and just hollyhocks and those things will throw lupins. They throw their seeds all over. So you got to be prepared to make changes, to dig things up, to move them. And I'm okay with that. Um, I don't think it's an every year thing that I'm going to have to do once I get it established, but maybe every three years I'll have to dig some things up. And if I do it when they're small, it won't be that big of a deal. Plus, I'm a gardener, so I like to do that. Um, I don't want it to turn into a nightmare every weekend I got to work in this garden. Uh, and I've worked very hard on my plan so that I don't have to do that. All right, I think our pots are dry, so let's go ahead and start the dipping process. I can't wait to do this. This can be fun. Okay, I got a tub of water right here okay and i filled it up to about right here because i mean some my, my one pot's pretty pretty good size all right so i'm going to be two, doing two of them in blue and two of them in green okay so i'm gonna do one of the front ones and one of the back ones so i'm doing the big 14 inch and the i guess oh it's an azalea pot that's what it's called not a mom pot uh this is a short azalea pot so i'm going to be doing these two first okay and i'm going to be doing them in blue Okay, so make sure you shake your paint can up. Okay, there's no leaves in my water. No bugs landed in there. No grasses in there because I don't want that on my pot. Oh, I lost my little cap. Come back here. Okay, put you back on there. Try not to squirt myself. Okay, so what you're supposed to do is you spray the paint on the water. And I got my gloves on here. Okay, and then I'll have to dump this out and put new water in it when I get ready to flip to green because I only brought one pot <laughs> or one tub. Okay, so you're supposed to... Oh, that's pretty cool. I'm going to get the camera and show you what that looks like. Okay, see what I'm doing here? I'm just spraying that on the top of the water. So I did shake the can up before I went. Okay, so... I don't know. That looks good, huh? Okay, let's let's dip. <laughs> I've never done this, so we're going to find out. I'm going to do the big one first. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to lay it in here. And I'm going to kind of turn it around and dip it. Oh, what do you think? That's pretty cool. I'm letting the water drain out of the bottom. Doesn't matter if there's paint inside. Okay. I'm going to get all that water out of there. Out. Get out, water. Okay. So there's my first one. What do you think? That's my first one. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> and what's really cool is no two pots will look the same. Okay. Now this one, I'm going to dip it in like this and pull it back out. And I think I want a little bit more over here. And if you don't get enough on it and you need to get more on it, you can add paint to the water and dip it again. So I want a little bit more on this one. Okay. What do you think? See? There's that one. How cool is that? I just think that that's, I think that's cool. All right. So that one's there. All right, now I gotta dump my tub out. I'm gonna add water to it, clean it out, and then we'll do the green. Okay, so a little bit of miscalculation there. So this is what your tub will look like when you're done. So the extra paint goes to the edges and it doesn't just spray out. So I went and got another tub. Good thing I had a few of them handy. So now I'm just gonna fill this one up with water and then we'll add the green paint and dip the other one. Okay, I didn't put as much water in this one because I don't think I need it because these pots are a little bit smaller. All right, so I am using the next two sizes. So I'm gonna do this one and this one. This is the 10 and the 12. And this one I'm gonna do in the green. Let me grab my gloves. Okay. Make sure you shake your paint can up. <laughs> I hate getting the lids off paint cans. Come on, come off. There it is. Okay. Oh, I got a little piece of grass in there. 
Let me get that out. Okay. I better put my gloves on. I really don't want the paint all over my hands. It's okay if I sell my, my gloves. These are great gloves. I love these gloves. I love these gloves. Okay, here we go. Here's my green. All right. Are you ready? Here we go. I think I went a little bit more. I didn't get enough. Takes quite a bit. So you got to get a little bit in there so you get good coverage. And then the paint moves around. You got to kind of chase it. Huh, the green doesn't look as good as the blue did. I don't know why. This one looks more yellow. Yeah, see, I'm not loving this one. I might do it again. Let's add more paint. More paint! All right, here we go. Here we go. Now we got some on there. Okay, that's so much better. Okay, there we go. There's that one. I'm not sure I like this one as much. I think I like the blue better. But I'm committed now. <laughs> and then if I hate it, that's okay. I'll do two others. I got lots of terracotta pots. But we'll leave it and then incorporate it in. I got a bigger pot, so I'm going to put more paint in. Don't you hate it? Spray paint always makes your finger hurt. All right, there we go. And in here we go. All right. Yeah, it looks more yellow than it does green. So I'm not in love. I'm not in love with this one. There's that one. Okay. Let's put them together as a grouping and see what they look like. Okay. So if I were to put this in my cottage garden as a grouping, I would be putting, let's see, this one to the front. Let me take this off. And this one will be to the back over here. See, and then there'd, there'd be a chair right here, like one of those low chairs. And then this one would go here. This one's so kind of like that. All right, let's see if I like that. Oh, well, it's not bad. It's not bad. I don't know. We'll plant it up and put it in the garden, and we'll see what they look like. So I think it's pretty cool, though. I think what would be really cool is if, like, you did one in black and then did, like, hot pink or gold. That would be cool, too. Like, if you're looking for a more contemporary look or something different. But something really fun to play around with, that's for sure. Okay. I am such a goof. Oh, my God. I've been looking all over for these. <laughs> I ran and got another pair of glasses because I didn't know what I did with them. I swear. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I do that all the time. I've walked around with car keys in my hand going, where are my car keys? Okay, so let's talk about, I swear I'm going to make flashcards if I'm going to count things down from now on because I cannot keep count to save my life. Okay, so another tip that will help you or something else that maybe you want to incorporate into your cottage garden, and some of it depends on how big it is. If you can put like a stone walkway through it, that would be really nice too, or even a path of some kind, uh, something that leads you to something. So when we create ours, we're going to have the fence panels, we're going to do the arbor, and then we'll have like a little flagstone walkway that leads you to the sitting area with the fire pit. And then we're going to create all the stuff around it. So that's kind of like the bones of what I kind of have in my head of what I want to do. And then, again, I'm not sure what I'm going to use as like my enclosure. I'm still, I'm still thinking about that. And I might not plant that until after I put it in. And then I go, oh, that's it. That's what I'm going to use. That's okay. So... I am going to pot up my little pots, though, and I am going to put them in the garden, and I'm going to be using seeds. And so, remember I said back in the day, there was a mix of not just flowers, but edibles as well. 
So I'm going to add some edibles into the garden and I'm going to be planting some red salad bowl in one of the pots and we're going to be growing lettuce right in the pot. We're also going to plant some arugula so that we have arugula. I don't have any going in the garden right now. Super easy to grow both of these and so we can do those and uh, lettuce in pots works great, looks good. Nice ornamentals in there. That's why I'm using the, the different colored lettuce for this one. And they both want full sun and my little cottage garden is gonna be in full sun. And these are going to take probably 45 days and the arugula will be a little bit faster, probably more like 40 days. And then I'm gonna do some zinnias. So I'm gonna do zinnias and these are the short ones. Uh, they only get about two feet high and I'm probably gonna get these in 65 to 70 days. Now, to know whether or not you actually have time to do seeds, what you do is if you were to type in average last frost and then your zip code, it will tell you on the internet like when your average last frost date is. Now, that's not, uh, doesn't mean that you won't get one in front of it. It just means that that's the average in your area. Typically, what I do is I'll throw two weeks onto there or back it up two weeks. So our average last frost is usually right around October 7th or something like that. I'm going to use September 24th as my cutoff day. And if I go backwards and I count how many days there are left um, in July and August and September, then I have about 96 days left to plant for everything to you know bloom and be able to use everything. So I want to make sure that whatever it is that I'm going to plant, I have enough time to do that. So like if I wanted to do snapdragons, most snapdragons take 90 to 110 days. So that's not something that I can do right now but I can do the zinnias because it's only 65 to 70 days. So it might take them a little bit to come in and uh, grow and get my flowers and they'll come in, in the fall. So I kind of picked fall colors for those. And then I also picked some blue bachelor's buttons. And these are, again, they're only like two feet high. So I'll put these in the two bigger pots and I'll put these in the two smaller pots. And then in the middle of the two herb pots, I'm also, I'm gonna plant a flat leaf Italian parsley. Uh, I'm finding that I only planted one this year in my herb garden and I'm going through it really fast and I need another one. So I'm gonna plant this one. It's an annual herb, so it'll be done at the end of the year. And then I'm also going to be planting a French tarragon. And at the end of the season, for us, French tarragon is a perennial. I'll take it out of the pot, put it in the ground, and hopefully it'll come back next year as an herb in the garden. I only have uh, one growing in my garden and I find that I want more. I like tarragon, so it's not so much that I need more right this minute uh, to use. I want more to dry so that I have it through the winter and I don't have to buy it at the grocery store uh, because if you dry your own herbs, oh, they're so much better than what you buy at the grocery store. So I'm going to plant one of these as well. Okay. Um, let's see. Was there anything else that I wanted to tell you about what we're doing? I'm going to plant these up. Um, I'm going to put the pots over here to dry. Oh, I am going to take a can. Let me run and grab it. I'll be right back. There's a little bit of wind out here. It makes it so nice out. It's super nice today. It's like 79 degrees and a little bit of a breeze. It's so nice. I am going to spray polyurethane on them. I don't know if I need to do that or not, but I'm going to. Uh, maybe it'll make the paint last a little bit longer on there. And so I am going to spray this on there. I'll probably do two coats. Then I'm going to fill it up with dirt and I'm going to start my seeds and, and just get them planted. And that way they'll be ready to go. Now, the other thing that we're going to do, and I'll do it in tomorrow's video when we're doing the fire pit and some of the other things, or what Wednesday's video, um, I am gonna make a gabion. And so what that is, is when you take a metal structure, like chicken wire, hardware cloth, I'm gonna actually do mine with uh, hardware cloth, and then I'm gonna make another one out of three tomato cages. And you kind of make a structure where you can stack rocks inside of it, and then you put uh, a glass on top for a table, or you can put uh, a round paver on it and you can create a table that way or a pedestal to put a plant on. I'm gonna be creating a couple of those to put in the garden as well because I kind of want that vintage look. And then I'm also gonna be creating a couple of concrete planters. And I'm actually gonna make them, I'm just gonna make them out of pavers. And so I'll be taking my pavers and I'll be gluing those together with paver glue. They're gonna be anchored so that they can grow right into the ground, but they're gonna be that element in my garden next to the walkways that will be permanent, that will be like this little, I don't know, interesting thing. I don't know if it's gonna be cool. I'm gonna do it anyways, because I just, I thought it would be cool to do that. And I'm always looking for different planters and I like square planters, but sometimes they're hard to find. So I'm gonna do it with the concrete. It'll insulate well, and there we go. All right, so that's all I have for today. That's kind of the start of our cottage garden. The next two videos are gonna be dedicated to cottage gardening. And 
by the end of the week, we'll be done and we'll be sitting outside having a cocktail in our new cottage garden by the end of the week. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Michelle. Keep on gardening and we will see you in the next video. Bye everybody.